Now we'll look at the second question, which is on the characteristics of artery, vein, and capillaries. And this table that you can see here is actually super important. So if you can, do try to memorize this. But anyway, this question is about filling in the blanks. So they gave um, these two and we have to figure out this one. So first of all, artery, the wall is thick elastic and muscular so just imagine like one of your friends whose name starts from a let's say you have a friend named alvin whose name starts from a and he is a muscular guy so just remember when it comes to muscular you have to remember tem so the walls are thick elastic and muscular so this is how I remember it. And then for veins, it is just less. Okay, for veins, you will just have thin and less elastic and less muscular. Okay, but what they're asking here is essentially the wall of the capillary. So this is actually a characteristic feature of capillary capillaries are only one cell thick so how do you remember this well there is a c in capillaries and there's a c in cell so when you see capillaries look at the c and think of cell so the answer will be one cell thick so we've done this box now we move on to the next box, valves. So, valves is actually a characteristic feature of veins. And to remember this, it's of course very easy. Veins have valves. V and V. As simple as that. So, in capillaries, there are, there are no valves at all. And in veins, we have valves. And... There are valves to ensure one-way flow of blood, to ensure that blood flows in one direction only. This can be asked as a separate question in subjective or in MCQ, in paper 1 as well. So do remember why there are valves. Now we'll move on to artery. So in artery, there are usually no valves except for two. Except for two A's, they have valves. So the two A that I mentioned are aorta and pulmonary artery so in arteries there are no valves except for aorta and pulmonary artery okay now we we'll look at the next one the next question is on lumen so the lumen of capillary is very small do remember this and then the lumen of artery is small okay so we have said before on how to remember that artery is muscular so you have a friend named Alvin he is very muscular so when it comes to muscular just remember TEM so he is um, so the wall is thick elastic and muscular and lumen is actually the space in between the wall like okay this is the wall of artery or vein or capillary and this is the lumen so when it comes to artery the wall is very thick so common sense when the wall is thick the lumen will be small all right so this is why your answer for Lumen will be small and for veins, it is thin. So the lumen will be large. So this answer here will be large. And next, we'll have the direction of the blood flow. The direction of the blood flow of artery and vein are actually opposite to each other. They oppose each other. So how do you remember the direction of blood flow of artery? Artery. A. Okay. So A means away, away from heart. So this is the answer for this column right here. 
the direction of blood flow of artery is away from the heart and then from veins it is towards the heart because um it's opposite artery and vein are always opposing each other so if the artery is away from heart then the vein is towards the heart and then for capillaries it's just from artery to vein what you can remember how you can remember that in capillaries the blood flows from artery to vein is when you see the a here okay see the a here and you know that it's from artery to vein all right now we we'll move on to the next one blood pressure the blood pressure in artery is high and you can remember this by again referring to the thick thing that we talked about artery is thick elastic muscular so every single part of our body is that way for a certain reason it's just not without reason that your artery is thick why is it thick it is because there is high blood pressure when there is high blood pressure the heart has to work harder to pump the blood and so the thickness of the artery helps in that so that is why the blood pressure in the artery is high and the blood pressure in veins is low because the walls are thin and less muscular in capi uh, in capillaries the other hand the blood pressure is very low because the capillary is only one cell thick how do you remember that the capillary is only one cell thick write out capillary c cell so one cell thick okay next the oxygen content the oxygen content in artery is very high because the function of the artery okay wait let me try to explain that properly again the oxygen content in the artery is very high because the artery where is the direction of blood flow in the artery it is away from heart so what is the function of heart the function of heart is actually to pump oxygen to all parts of the body so now you can remember that the oxygen content in artery is high because it is from the heart and the function of the heart is to pump oxygen to all body parts so the oxygen content is in the artery is high and in veins it is low except for pulmonary vein and then in capillaries we have the arterial end and venule end so arterial end is oxygenated while the venule end is deoxygenated okay and now we'll look at b state two characteristics of capillaries that make it suitable for gases exchange to take place between them so this is a famous question as well why is capillaries suitable for gaseous exchange we have already talked about one of the reasons um, just now capillaries see here one cell thick so when it's one cell thick it actually means that it is very thin so your answer would be thin wall reason number one thin wall your explanation is one cell thick and reason number two why capillaries are suitable for gaseous exchange is because it is moist when it is moist it actually makes it easier for gases to diffuse in and through them by the way i use the arrow a lot and this arrow represents two it's just my way of um, short forming these things so two characteristics one is that this is thin wall and the other one is moist it makes it easier for gases to diffuse in and through them okay and finally c in the diagram below label the artery arterial capillaries venules and vein so look at this diagram here
Okay, so from this diagram, how do you know which one is artery and which one is vein? Okay, actually in this diagram, they did give a bit of a clue because this side is darker and when it's darker, it usually means that it's oxygenated and that is how you will know that it's artery. But then the other more important and more obvious clue is this direction that they have given here. So the capillaries is in the middle. You asked to label the capillary as well. So the capillary is always in the middle of artery, artery and vein. And previously we have talked about this. In capillary, look at the A here to V. So in capillaries, the blood flows from artery to vein. Right. So this would be artery because this is the direction that they have given. So this would be artery. And this would be vein. Next, we have two more terms left to label. And they are arterial and also venu. So first of all, you need to know what are arterials and venules. So arterial is actually a mini artery and vein is and venule is actually a mini vein. So when you know that, you know just where to label it. It'll be somewhere here. It's an artery and then it comes to mini artery, then it goes to capillary. And then from the capillary it goes to mini vein, which is venule, then it goes to vein. So this is how you label this diagram for three marks.